Cindy, your organization has developed a tool for the analysis of food insecurity. It wants to inform better policy making and support political decision makers. Can you please briefly explain to us how it works and what the key purpose of the IPC tool is? It gives you a set of tools um, which includes an analytical framework, a reference table for which you can classify the severity of the food security situation based on international thresholds. It also gives you a process for evaluating the um, reliability and confidence of the data, and then converging all your data to be able to classify the severity of the population in terms of food security. Cindy, do I understand you correctly? You were talking about a tool like a computer setup. Um, and if I think of tools, I think of pencils and hammers and so forth. And obviously nowadays computers are part of this. What does it look like, the IPC tool? No, no, it's not a tool at all. Um, we're talking about the analysis of data. So with it, you've got reference tables, analytical framers, and protocols for which, you, which you utilize to analyze your data. So let's say you, you're um, going into a country and you're wanting to, you've got all these different types of data, nutrition, agriculture production, um, different partners are saying different things about the situation, they have different data. You bring your data together in, in one place, all the experts sit together, they can then use these tools of the analytical framework to interpret and analyze their data in a coherent, evidence-based way. It's analytical tools and protocols and processes. So if I understand correctly, the tool would be used by government people and they would then take the data and use the tool to elevate the information to higher levels of comprehension and use that then for their political decision making. Yeah, I think what's the key is that it allows, um, it provides you the tools and processes for consolidating complex analysis to very strategic information that decision makers need. Food security by its nature is complex. You have to look at a number of different types of information and data to arrive at what's a food security situation. This tool and process simplifies complex information and converts it into manageable information for decision makers. Um, and it also provides a context and protocol for people to reach agreement on what the situation is. How bad is the food security? Who is, who is food insecure? Where are they? Why? One of the biggest problems we face in the countries is that many agencies and many governments, whether it's NGOs, governments, UN, they all have their own methodologies and um, data collection methods and tools. This you can bring all of them together, you apply it with an international standard and reach um, a simplified analysis of what the situation is. So it, it gives a common currency for discussing, it gives common definitions and classification which is based on international thresholds. So it's comparable across different countries. So if you use this and you apply this tool, the analysis that is reached in one country will be comparable to another country. And this is one of the importance of the tool and why it's considered a global standard. Because you can compare the severity of food security from one country to another and it allows decision makers then to be able to prioritize how they can allocate resources and also know that one, one crisis in one country and how it compares to another or even within a country. So the idea is that Food crises quite often come about in entire regions and in different countries then they use the same tool on a standardized level so they can compare the information um, and then they would foresee problems on the horizon. Is that right? Yes, that's true. Um, just to give you an example, it's not just within the cross-country but it's also within countries. For example, in DRC. Um, before they used the IPC in 2007, they were looking at the northeastern part of um, the provinces and they were identifying a problem of food insecurity. Once they, and they allocated resources and they, um, they promoted programming and support to those regions. However, when they applied the IPC, they found out that other regions were equally, if not more, severely affected. So the IPC, even in a country, 
allows you comparability within a country from one population to another to be able to identify how severe it is and how it compares. Also, at a regional level, if you look at the Horn of Africa, you can begin, I, countries in the Horn of Africa are now using, several countries are, so at a regional level, you can put together a picture of where the severity is most in terms of the region. You know that the, the analysis done in Somalia, for example, is comparable to the analysis done in Uganda or Tanzania or South Sudan or Central Africa Republic. Cindy, what is the best experience you've had with the tool so far? Well, I think what's really um, exciting is to see when it's applied, the IPC is applied and picked up in a country for the first time. Um, recently, in 2013, in February, the Philippines, everybody has heard about the Typhoon Bufa that hit. We had just done a training with the Philippines, and after the typhoon hit, they asked us to come back and support because they wanted to apply the IPC to this recent disaster. Uh, and it proved very effective. Um, millions of dollars were allocated based on the IPC and the, the targeting that was provided. The Philippines government is very thrilled about um, the tool because it helps them better analyze the information, better communicate where the problem is, how severe it is, and as a result, they're able to then respond more quickly and more effectively. Since then, they've um, gone around and evaluated the tool in many ways, and they're looking to integrate it within their government institutions. Thank you. Great.